In the previous episode, we explored the rise of the Raptoran colonies, which fiercely dominate large portions of the fungal Mars. Today, we turn our attention to a new civilization of ants that have risen to power, claiming the treetops of the Artronia's forest as their own. These canopy dwellers possess a range of unique adaptations allowing them to thrive in a world where the fight for resources only intensifies. 20 million years past city, in the mid proto chitonian period, the competitions for food source become ever more fierce. As we discussed, colonies of ants which were over one of the most precious energy resources, sugar. Beyond nectar from flowers and the sticky secretions of Arthurian's moss, some colonies rely on symbiotic fungi like the guardian fungus, which provide for mushroom ants. However, there is another significant source of sugar in Arthurian's dense forest, tree sap. Tree sap a nutrient-rich liquid that flows through a plant's vascular system, particularly through the xylem and phloem, carries essential sugars and water throughout the plant. This sap is a vital energy source for many ant species, thanks to its rich carbohydrate content. Among the trees that produce sap in abundance is Horcus hydrophilus or water oak. Horcus is Latin for oak and hydrophilus from the Greek meaning water loving, reflecting its adaptation to tropical forests and wetlands. These trees grow up to 30 meters tall with broad canopies stretching 25 to 30 meters wide. Their trunks, massive and formidable, measure 3 to 5 meter in diameter, clock and thick, deeply grooved bark that shields them from pests and extreme weather. The water oak leaves are large, glossy and slightly serrated, coated in a waxy layer that help retain moisture. Its root system is specialized for its environment, but a deep trap root for assessing groundwater and wet lateral network that anchor it in wetland soil. This tree thrives in tropical, well-drained soil and foot-prone wetland thanks to special air pockets in its roots that allow gas exchange during periodic floods. What makes Quercus hydrophilus truly unique are its specialized glands, known as flame exudation glands. Found beneath its bark, these glands produce a slowly really small amount of sugary sap concentrated mainly at the base and lower branches. For the ends of Artonia, this sap is a prized source of sustenance and its accessibility makes it an irresistible target. But the bounty of the water oak doesn't come without a price. Any colony seeking to claim this rich sugar source must face fierce competition from rival and colonies. As the canopy is fast, the contest for dominance over this resource will inevitably lead to clashes among the colonies. The battle for the treetops of Arturnia is about to begin. One of the most dominant ant species that has claimed the treetops of Artronia's forest is Myrmica titan arboricalis or more commonly known as the tree ant. Myrmica titan derived from the Greek Myrmex meaning ant, Titanos meaning giant, emphasizing the impressive size of the species which rivaled that of a small rodent. Arboricolis, combining the Latin arbor, meaning tree, and colis, meaning inhabitant, signifying its arboreal lifestyle and preference for tree-dwelling habitats. The ants are remarkably large, 
measuring between 18 to 25 cm in length and weighing 400 to 600 grams. Their size and features grant them a formidable presence in the treetops. The tree and exoskeleton is tougher and more flexible than that of smaller ants, offering them better protection in their exposed arboreal environment. The natural grooves and pattern in their exoskeleton help them blend into tree bark, making them less visible to both predator and rival ant species. Their legs are longer and more articulated compared to their ground dwelling relatives, allowing them to grip branches and move through the canopy with ease. The tips of their feet are equipped with small sticky pads similar to those of geckos which allow them to cling to smooth or vertical surfaces without falling. This adaptation is crucial for navigating the complex three-dimensional structure of the forest canopy. While their mandibles are still capable of delivering a strong bite, they have evolved to serve multiple purposes. The mandibles are used not only for defending the colony, but also for tending to epids harvesting tree sap and managing colony resources. Their slightly extended abdomen holds a specialized gland that produces defensive chemicals. These chemicals are used both for protecting their epids, which provide them with valuable honeydew, and for colony defense. The colony structure of tree ants also differs in that they typically have multiple swings, which help maintain population stability. The workers are highly mobile, moving efficiently between the scattered nest via tree branches. Their sticky footpads give them unmatched agility, enabling them to leap between branches or cling upside down to avoid predator arrival ends. Tree ants construct their nests by weaving together large, flexible leaves found high in the forest canopy. Using their powerful mandibles and cooperative behavior, the ants pull leaves together, creating tightly bound structure using silk produced by their larvae. Nest building is cooperative effort involving hundreds of workers. Adult ants hold the leaves in place while the larva produce the silk needed to weave them together. The workers then carefully stitch the leaves using silk threads, creating a secure and weather-resistant space that offers protection from the elements. These nests are typically built on sturdy branches located high in the treetops, far from the predators that roam the forest floor. The ants prefer branches that are situated near valuable food sources, such as trusep or nearby epids colonies. Its nest is built in layers. The initial leaf structure is just the beginning, and over time more leaves are added, making the nest larger and more fortified. This expansion allows the tree ants to accommodate their growing colony, providing space for more ants and larvae. The tree ant nest is composed of several chambers, each serving a specific purpose. The outer cell is designed for protection and insulation, while the inner chamber houses the queen, larva, food storage, and workers. All the leaves shell. The nest's outermost layer is woven from large, tightly interwoven leaves. This shell acts as a protective barrier against predators, rain, or wind. The shell used to bind the leaves is waterproof and highly durable, making the nest resistant to weather damage. Queen's chamber, this central, well-protected area of the nest, is where the queen resides and lies a the queen's chamber is heavily guarded by workers and soldiers to ensure her safety and the colony's future. Surrounding the queen's chamber are the nurseries, where the larvae are carefully nurtured 
These chambers are kept warm and humid to provide optimal conditions for larval development. Workers constantly tend to the larva, ensuring they are well fed and protected. Food storage chambers These rooms are designated for storing the colonist's food supplies. This includes sap, honeydew, and protein source gathered from scavenging. Workers meticulously store and guard these resources to ensure the colony's survival during lean times. The silk produced by the larva not only acts as a binding agent but also serves as a protective layer inside the nest. The silk reinforces the structure, making it difficult for predators to breach the walls. It also provides flexibility, allowing the nest to sway with the wind preventing damage during storms. Tree and nests are built with expansion in mind. As the colony grows, workers can easily add more leaves to the other layers, creating new chambers for food storage or nurseries without their need to relocate. This seamless expansion makes the nest highly adaptable to the colony's needs. The nest features a series of small strategic entrances that only the three ends can navigate. These entrances are heavily guarded by soldiers, ensuring that no rival ends or predators can infiltrate the colony. The entrances are also concealed by leaves, making them difficult for intruders to locate. The nest is designed with natural ventilation in mind. Small gaps between the leaves allow fresh air to circulate without compromising the nest integrity. These gaps prevent the buildup of heat during the day and keep the nest warm at night while also preventing rain from entering. This intricate nest building strategy reflects the three end impressive adaptability and cooperative behaviors allowing them to thrive in the high canopy of Artonia's forest. With their layered, expandable homes, these ants have mastered life above the ground, securing their place as one of the most dominant arboreal species in the ecosystem. With a strong symbiotic relationship between tree ants and various trees in the forest of Artonia, the trees thrive alongside the ever-expanding tree and civilizations. The ants protect the trees from other herbivores insects. In return, the tree provides the ants with shelter and valuable food sources like sap and nectar. The tree ants' dominance of the upper canopy in Artonia's forests allows their colonists to control key food resources such as sap and nectar that are inaccessible to the other ants' colonies. By 20 million years post seeding, ant colonies had evolved unique adaptation and specializations. The mushroom ants become expert fungus farmers. The raptor ants master the art of roaming and controlling the forest floor while the three ends rose as the rule of the upper canopy. Each colony adapted its strategies to avoid direct competition, finding different methods of securing their most essential energy source, sugar. However, despite their varying approaches, competition was inevitable. Another critical resource they all needed was protein. Unlike sugar, Protein could only be obtained through scavenging dead insects or hunting live prey. This led to a new wave of competition as these colonists now had to develop hunting strategies to satisfy their protein needs. In order to be successful hunters, they needed to understand their prey, what creatures they were hunting, where to find them, and how to catch them. The battle for protein became as fierce as the fight for sugar, pushing its end species to further hone their hunting tactic to secure the survival of their colonies.
Thank you for watching this episode of Arthur Genesis. The next episode will dive into the herbivore species of fungal mars. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.